Hello, my name is Joe. I'm a real fan of Jean-Paul Riopelle. And today, I'd like to tell you about him and his relationship to the theme of nature. Our definition of nature is simple. Nature is everything that surrounds us that hasn't been built or modified by humans. This includes forests, waters, animals, etc. While we often think of nature as existing outside of our inhabited environment, it can also be found in cities and towns, like the neighborhood squirrels living among us. Nature is both fragile and forceful. It is the delicate plants reborn each spring and the raging sea that washes away everything before it. Above all, nature fascinates us with its complexity and beauty. How could we ever remain unmoved before the spider's delicate web or the season's ever-changing palette of colors? A love of nature was installed in Jean-Paul during his early years. As his scout leader noted, he has a passionate love for scudism in nature. We know that he would often go canoeing and fishing as a boy. He also spent the long days of summer out painting in nature with his art teacher. In the city, they would paint still life, work with Jean-Paul approach in his usual playful manner, giving one of his pieces the title Nature Bien Mort, Very Still Life. One of his very first works is called Hibou Premier. He would go on to paint owls his whole life. In his 20s, he went on vacation with his parents to Saint-Fabien-sur-Mer in Quebec, where he painted numerous pieces showing the nature found in the Bassin Laurent region. Even as he worked on his grand abstract pieces in the 1950s and 60s, Jean-Paul's connection to nature never wavered. His colorful mosaics were exploding with life. He also continued his regular excursion into nature while living in France, in Veteuil and Saint-Cyr-en-Arty. He would go fishing and hunt wild boars like Obelix de Gaulle. Beginning in the 1970s, his work is marked by the hunting and fishing trips he would take in northern Quebec. Geese, moose, icebergs, leaves and the wind were increasingly present in his pieces. As he neared the end of his life, he moved to a beautiful home on Ile Grue, near Quebec City. He lived by the rhythm of the snow geese. His final work, L'Hommage à Rosa Luxembourg, completed in 1992, bears witness to his full engagement with nature. This is where he died in his island home on March 12, 2002.